Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in this word, John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, Ambassador Pan-African, and welcome to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. I just thought you may want to enjoy this video clip concerning and what Frederick Douglass said, and now his own grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, are speaking out on his behalf. The speech that was said by Frederick Douglass I believe is a great speech and I believe is a very timely speech for you to hear. Let us look at this clip together. Okay. Okay. My name is Alexa Ann Watson and I am the great, great, great granddaughter of Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass is my great, 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 great. Great, great, great granddaughter of Frederick Douglass. I am the great, 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 great grandchild. I've been counting on my fingers since yeah. I was like five. This is the 4th of July. It is the birthday of your national independence and of your political freedom. Fellow citizens, I shall not presume to dwell at length on the associations that cluster about this day. The simple story of it is that 76 years ago, the people of this country were British subjects. Oppression makes a wise man mad. Your fathers were wise men, and if they did not go mad, they became restive under this treatment. With brave men, there's always a remedy for oppression. They succeeded, and today you reap the fruits of their success. The freedom gained is yours and you, therefore, may properly celebrate this anniversary. Fellow citizens, pardon me. Allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I, or those I represent to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? I am not included within the pale of this glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. The blessings in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. Fellow citizens, above your national tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wail of millions. At a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument is needed. Oh, had I the ability and could reach the nation's ear, I would today pour out a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed, and its crimes against God and man must be proclaimed and denounced. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham your boasted liberty and unholy license. Your national greatness, swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciations of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence. Your shouts of liberty and equality. Hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings. With all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody 
than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Allow me to say in conclusion, notwithstanding the dark picture I have this day presented of the state of the nation, I do not despair of this country. This speech was written almost 170 years ago, but there, I mean, this part of it is still extremely relevant, especially with today's protests. I think that when people are oppressed, they feel silenced. And if someone feels silenced, they get angry. There are certain tactics that you need to use to get people to really hear your voice. And it's not always gonna be just like a very calm discussion. I think he's mostly talking to the people who are already on his side, but believe that um, they can still try to talk this out or that things are still justifiable. I know a lot of people at the time were saying, and people now are still saying that it's not as bad as it could be. While the 4th of July probably does not feel the same to me as it does to others, I wouldn't say that it has no meaning because it is the time when America as a country became free from another country. Um, but I would say that it's not the time in which I gained my freedom. He had a lot of hope, especially for his age. And like, I'm getting to the point in my life where I'm only 20 years old, but I'm, I'm exhausted. Like I'm, I have these thoughts like, will we ever really get to this point? Or is this really something that we should actually spend our time fighting for? Somebody once said that pessimism is a tool of white oppression. And I think that's true. I think in many ways we are still um, slaves to the notion that it will never get better. But I think that there is hope. Um, and I think it's important that we celebrate black joy and black life. And we remember that change is possible, change is probable. Um, and that there's hope.